Hi you folks! Welcome back to Bosco's Garden. If you're looking to create a pond in your garden to attract frogs, hedgehogs, dragonflies and birds, but you don't want to use ugly black plastic liner, and you're not sure if it will hold the water without it, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll show you how I recently made this pond and how I leak proofed it to stay full of water for all manner of creatures that are soon to flock to it. This is the third wildlife pond I've made and each time I've used a different method. For the first pond, I used the standard black polythene pond liner bought in most garden centres. This has worked great, but this liner will deteriorate over time, begin to leak and need to be replaced. The second pond was larger. I employed the use of machinery to dig it, and opted not to use any kind of liner, but instead to try to glee it with ducks. This has been somewhat successful in that it never fully loses water, but it definitely has its ups and downs. This time, however, I'll be trying a new method, using a geosynthetic clay liner, which consists of bentonite clay matted in a geotextile. It does contain some plastic fibres, but unlike black pond liner, once it deteriorates, the pond will remain sealed by the clay for decades, if not centuries to come. It's also covered by clay and soil, which is a lot better for small creatures and plants to cling to, rather than slippy plastic. So starting off, I removed this plastic I had been using to kill off the grass underneath which is a method of weed suppression that I've explained in other videos. Subscribe to find out more! The chickens then help to clean up the slugs. And the digging began. So I've started digging this pond and as you can see I've just taken out the topsoil. Uh, it's about less than a foot of topsoil and you can tell when I've gotten down to the subsoil when it starts to go with this slight yellowy colour as opposed to this brown. You can see the difference over here. I've got that subsoil in the wheelbarrow and then that's nice brown topsoil so there's a big difference between the two topsoil, subsoil, so you'll, it's fairly easy to recognize. If you're doing a plastic liner, you can just make these benches. I've made a bench all around, which is great for doing plant, pond plants in, like grasses, they like the shallow, and then the lilies like the deeper in the middle. You can see I've made a, a hard cliff here, which I'm going to smooth out with the shovel because I'm going to be using bentonite clay and you don't want any cliffs when you're doing it without a pond liner. If you're using a pond liner, you can leave cliffs and that's fine. But if you're going without, you're better to make smooth edges and smooth slopes so that it's, it will hold the water easier. At the edge of a beach where it comes up, it's going to be very easy for wildlife to get in and out of this. You don't want it to be a hard edge for wildlife or else hedgehogs could fall in and they won't be able to get back out. So it's very important that you have slopes at the edges of any pond. Once the bottom was nicely bowled out with no steep ledges, I smoothed the clay, removing large stones and started laying the GCL. It comes in 2.4 by 1.2 meter sheets and must be overlapped at the edges, spreading extra clay dust between the seams to seal them together. I then spread 5 bags of bentonite on top, covering all the seams well and topped that with soil. Then came the water. Thank you. 
So as you can see, the water's nearly up to the top here now. It didn't go down at all during the night. Um, and I'm quite happy with how it's leveled out at the edges. I put it up a little bit over at, on that far side where it was reaching the top closer than over here. And I just put a little bit of soil in underneath to prop it up and make it a bit higher. It's interesting, the, the clay itself. I was expecting the water to be quite cloudy, but it's not, it's really clear. And the clay is just such a, it's like a jelly kind of real clay texture. It's a, when it gets on your hands, it's kind of, it doesn't come off so easily. Uh, it is actually there now. Last night it was, it was a bit tough. It was, it's similar to using potting clay uh, is what it feels like. It just, it's sticky and hard to get off your hands. But yeah, this is looking really well. So now the next thing to do is make it look really pretty with rocks around it and do these beds. All in all, I think it's a success so far and definitely holding the water, so. Four days since I put in the water and it's holding up really really well so I'm really pleased with the GCL and the bentonite clay. I've got the beds around it and they're ready to plant up and I'll be putting in the next few or the next few days. It's going to rain tonight so just in time. So yeah uh, it's going to be really special during the summer. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see how it turns out and yeah tell your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.